Okay, this is the checkpoint to uh, go through for SHM checkpoint two. So our first question here is about displacement and kinetic energy. A little bit tricky here to uh, check first of all that we need to make sure that we've got the um, displacement velocity sorted out. So first job to do is to forget about kinetic energy because we're going to work out that from the velocity. We've got to work out what the velocity is. Remember to go from displacement to velocity we're looking for the gradient. So here's a steep negative gradient. We're down here. Here's a zero gradient. So we're here. Here's a positive gradient. So we've started off up here. So our velocity time graph will look something like that. So you might imagine that we're looking for something like that because um, kinetic energy depends on the velocity. But if you think about it, in this part of the region, that can't happen because kinetic energy can't be negative. So we do start off up here. The kinetic energy is reducing. I'm sorry, the kinetic energy is reducing. When we get to here, the kinetic energy can't become negative, so it has to go up again. It has to go up again to there, and then again, again we get to go up. So the kinetic energy graph looks something like this green line. If you look carefully, this can't be right because it can't be negative. This can't be right again because it can't be negative. So we're choosing between these two. Well, the kinetic energy isn't zero at the start. The kinetic energy is maximum at the start because the velocity is maximum. Okay, remember that um, that's the velocity graph up there. So C um, is wrong as well because we've got not starting at zero. We're starting at a maximum. It's at the middle here where the velocity is maximum. So that gives us the correct answer as being D. Okay, here's our second one. We've got our mass on a spring. So if we just draw ourselves a little picture to help understand, here's our spring, here's our mass. What we're doing, well, we're pulling this down by 10 centimetres and then we're releasing it. Um, and we've got two things. We've got amplitude and period. Well, hopefully it's fairly obvious that if you pulled it down 10, yes, it's going to go up here another 10, but the amplitude is half the total oscillation okay so the amplitude is 10 so it's not c and it's not d then we've got the period to look at all right you have to read carefully here the time to travel back up to the equilibrium position is half a second so it starts down here it goes to there that takes half a second it's then going to go up to there that's another half a second and then it's got to go back down to there and then back down to there so the total time to do all of that is going to be two seconds Okay, so that cancels out A, and we end up with the answer being B. Okay, here's the first longer answer question. So we've got a mass uh, on a spring here, and 200 gram mass suspended from the spring. It produces an extension of 3.5 centimetres. So the first thing we've got to remember is our equation back from unit 2, F equals K delta L. So the force, be careful here, this is 0 0.2 kilograms, but times 9.8 for gravity. That's the force pulling it down, that's equal to the spring constant times the time change in length. Well, the change in length is 3.5 centimetres, so that's 3.5 times 10 to the minus 2. So we get K equals 0.2 times 9.8 over 3.5 times 10 to the minus 2. That comes to 56 newtons per meter. Remember what that means, 56 newtons to stretch this spring by one meter. Okay, then we get our second situation where we've got another spring which is the same and added the two together. Notice here it says state, so we're not really doing a formula like this to calculate it. What you need to remember is that if you've got two springs in series like this, then it's going to be much easier to stretch them. So the spring constant goes from 56. All you've got to do is 56 divided by 2. This is now 28 newtons per meter, 28 newtons to stretch it by one meter. Then you put a 500 gram mass on it and it um, you displace it slightly. Performance oscillations. How many oscillations in one minute? Well, the first thing to do is to work out the period of the oscillation. So we do t, t equals 2 pi root m over k. Sorry about my pi there. Okay, so that's 2 pi times the square root of the mass, which was 0 0.5 kilograms, divided by the spring constant, which we said is 28. If you stick that into your calculator, then you find that the time period is 0.84 seconds. Don't forget to actually answer the question. So we want the number of oscillations in one minute. 
Okay, well, it's 0.84 of a second, so this is 60 seconds a minute divided by 0 0.84 oscillations uh, seconds for each oscillation. Just think about that logically. If it was 10 seconds for each oscillation, it'd be 60 divided by 10, 6 oscillations. That gives you 71 oscillations in one minute. Okay, in this question, we've got a trolley with a mass of 0 0.8 kilograms. We've got it on there. Uh, tethered between two springs. At the moment it's in equilibrium, so we've got a force to the left, F1, and we've got a force to the right, F2. We can say F1 equals F2. Those two forces are the same at the moment. Then we're going to pull it this way by 60 millimetres. Let's call that 60 times 10 to minus 3 metres. And we need to work out the resultant force. Okay, well clearly the force on this spring is going to have decreased because it's um, less extended the force on this one's going to have increased okay so the calculation here is that this the force to the left is now the original force f1 minus uh, 60 times 10 to the minus 3 times the spring constant which was 30 the force to the right is now going to be the original force f2 plus 60 times 10 to the minus 3 times 30. Okay, so this is F1 minus 1.8. This is F2 plus 1.8. That gives us a change in force overall of 3.6 newtons. So the resultant force is now 3.6 newtons to the right. Okay, to work out the acceleration of the trolley, um, this is fairly straightforward. This is just acceleration equals force over mass. So we've just worked out the resultant force is 3.6. Uh, the mass of the trolley in the question was 0 0.8. That just gives us 4.5 meters per second squared. And the direction is to the right. Two conditions for simple harmonic motion. Okay, we really should know these by now. So remember, acceleration is proportional to displacement. Right, and the minus sign is because it's in the opposite direction. So to work out the frequency of the trolley, okay, we've got this expression here which they've given us. This looked quite familiar. This is just the t equals um, 2 pi root m over k turned upside down and 2k because we've got two springs involved. So calculate the period of the trolley. So Let's work out the frequency because that's what they've given us the equation for. That's 1 over 2 pi times the square root of 2 times 30 divided by 0 0.8 was the mass. If you put all that into the um, equation, then you end up with a frequency of 1.38 hertz. And then to get the period, you just do T equals 1 over F. So that's 1 over 1.38 gives you a period of 0.73 seconds. Don't forget the units, okay? There is a mark for the units on that question. Even though it's a pretty, pretty easy one because it's just a period. Okay, then they've um, done this analogy to um, the idea that in bonds, in uh, crystal lattices, the ions behave a little bit as if the ionic bonds are like springs. So we're really just doing the same calculation again here, but just applying it to um, this ion lattice. So we've still got F equals 1 over 2 pi times the square root of 2k over m. So that's 1 over 2 pi times the square root of, well, here's the spring constant for this, so 2 times 200 divided by the mass. Obviously, the mass is very small here. Um, 1 times 10 to the minus 25 kilograms. Stick that into your calculator and you find that you get um, a frequency of 1.01 times 10 to the 13 hertz. Okay, question says show that it's about 10 to the 13 hertz, so we're happy. Okay, remember, don't use that information, work out the frequency and then be happy that you've got the right answer. Then we've got the amplitude of vibration, so we've, um, and then we're asked to work out the maximum speed. So remember, this is the V max equation. V max equals two pi f a. Okay, fairly straightforward. We've all, already got all that. We've got the frequency was one point naught one times ten to the thirteen. 
We've got the amplitude is 10 to the minus 11. Just be careful, obviously. It's a very small amplitude. This gives us um, a naught point, uh, sorry, beg your pardon, 630 meters per second, 628 if you do it precisely. Okay, ax estimate the maximum kinetic energy. Well, we've just got the maximum speed, so to work out the maximum kinetic energy, all we've got to do is a half mv max squared. So it's a half. It told us the mass of the iron was 1 times 10 to the minus 25 kilograms. We've just worked out v max. It's 630, so we've got to square that. If you put all those numbers into the calculator, then you end up with the energy of 2 times 10 to the... Whoops, 2, try again. 2 times 10 to the minus 20 joules. Okay, last one on here. This is uh, fairly straightforward to start. We're trying to work out the spring constant. So remember the equation to do the spring constant. F equals K delta L. So we've got a force. We've got a 0 0.25 kilogram mass. Again, remember, don't forget there to multiply that by gravity. It's K delta L. Again, this is in millimeters. So 40 times 10 to the minus 3. So we get K equals 0 0.25 times 9.8 divided by 40 times 10 to the minus 3 gives us a spring constant for this uh, system of 61 newtons per meter. Okay, the next part of this question is just really about being careful. So an additional mass of 0.44 kilograms is placed on the spring and then you set it into oscillation. So we want to calculate the frequency, so we'll do the period first. So t equals 2 pi root m over k. So t equals 2 pi times the square root. This is where we've got to be careful. We've got this mass, but this was an additional 0.44 kilograms. So the total mass is 0.69 kilograms divided by the spring constant that we worked up there is 61 newtons per meter. So this gives us a period for this system of uh, 0.4 six six seven seconds but they didn't ask us to work out the period they asked us to work out the frequency so f equals one over t is one over point six six seven is one point five hertz okay once again that's nice because they've given us the answer we just have to show them that's correct and they'll be happy